So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick example of how to use JSOUP to extract out the actual raw text in an HTML element and how we use the evaluate functionality in debug, explore the API to do that. Should be good. Okay, so I was parsing this text, essentially this text, I was using JSOUP to pull out the elements and then I want this code that's in the element. Now the problem is, this is perfectly readable to us as humans, but I want these line breaks. But when JSOUP parses it, I don't get those line breaks because that is HTML and HTML trims those out. So what I had to do was, when I was using JSOUP to parse this, I had to explore the text API a little bit. So I'm going to show you quickly how I do that. Now this is what I end up with. I know I have to use the text nodes in order to do that, but I didn't know that at the start. So I'm going to show you what I did. Imagine that what we actually had at the start was, let's see, text equals element dot, and then which method do I use? Do I use own text? Do I use text? Do I use HTML? Which one? Well, the way I found this out was by randomly picking one because I don't think the Java doc tells me. Uh, get the text own, da 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 da, text nodes, da 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 da. All right, so it's not necessarily clear from the Java docs that one returns the raw text, one doesn't. So I'm going to show you how I actually found it. So let me run the test that controls this in debug mode. So we have loaded in a file, it has found one of the passages. Now I want to find out which one of these has the line breaks in it. So I've got, I'm in debug mode. What I'm going to do is highlight this text and I'm going to evaluate the expression and just run it. Now I can see in here there's no um, new lines so own text doesn't return the information I want. I do control space, what about outer HTML? What does that give me? So outer HTML does give me the new lines in there. That's quite good. So I could use outer HTML for that but I then have to reparse it to get this out. So outer HTML isn't quite what I want. And I'm surprised that outer HTML has done that because it wasn't doing it last time I looked at it. So what else have we got here? So we've got data set, a map of strings. I have no idea what that returns. So that returns nothing. Um, I've got data. Let's evaluate that. Now, when I was first doing this, I, I didn't look at text notes because what I was doing is I was looking down the side here going, I want a string. So what returns a string? And I went through this going, what was returning a string? What's returning a string? I tried all the things like this. Oh, um, HTML, show me the, the text for that. And HTML is now returning backslash ends, which it wasn't before, right? Don't know why that was. Now it could be that the different versions of the files are responding in different ways, but I wasn't seeing that before. So this is good, but this is how you find functions that work. So in theory, I could make it simple myself and just pull out the HTML. What I actually used <laughs> was text nodes. Because um, when I did text nodes, I could see that I had a list of all the text that was in there with the backslash ends, and that looked simple. So I iterated around. But you just saw from the um, evaluate expression in the debug that I could in theory have used HTML, even though that wasn't working with the other data file. I wonder, so what I'm going to do now, so excuse me for a second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this on the other file and see if it is the uh, particular file that is working differently. So here's an experiment that could go wrong. Let me debug this. Now the point is, this gives me a good chance to redemo it. The point is, we put a breakpoint at the code we want to investigate. We highlight code 
And at this point, when I do evaluate expression, I am in the kind of running JVM instance that we had there. So I can access any of the variables that we had. So there's own text. There's no new lines in there. That's not what I want. We saw that HTML was returning it. So let's see, HTML is returning all the new lines again. I have no idea why I wasn't seeing that the first time through in this uh, process, but I wasn't, so I used text notes. I'm not going to change my code as a result of this investigation. The point is to show you this. Now, one thing that I do very often have when we're doing this, in fact, I can show you here. Um, when I'm running, we haven't moved out of debug mode. Very often, what I'll do is I'll store um, text and strings and CSS locators and things in uh, variables so that when I'm debugging code, imagine this on element own text or something that's using a CSS variable. Imagine this passage is, imagine the set ID in passage is what it's using. So if I go into evaluate expression and I do some work and I discover, oh, the fix is really in the CSS locator or is in this passage ID. Let's have a look. Passage dot, uh, What's the get ID on passage? So I'm going to set the ID on passage to be 39. Say that's the fix I want to make. Let's get the ID. So it's 39. If I close this down, at this point, passage now has the value 39. So any code that I now debug would use 39 is the, the value in passage. That allows me to debug a problem, fix the values that are in variables. I would make code changes here to fix the variable here. Continue my debugging process to make sure that that fix does actually work. And then the next time that I run this test, I will have changed the code and I'm more certain that it's going to work. But the point of this video was breakpoint, evaluate, experiment with the API or the the methods on this class to see which one gets the value that you want. And then we saw that I had done it incorrect the last time, but what I did worked. And that's what's important when we're automating tactically.